Hello everyone and welcome to Try Hack Me's Advent of Cyber Day 13. My name is Katie aka Insider PhD and I make videos teaching you how to get into web security, bug bounty hunting, API hacking and more. So if you're interested in that kind of thing feel free to have a look at some of my other videos. But today we're doing Try Hack Me's Advent of Cyber and today it is all about WebSockets. So let's jump into the story. This Sockmas was packed with exploits and hacking, today's threat an app which allows Wes' car tracking. Mere malware, no doubt, that's their suspicion. For Glitch and McSkiddy, the proof was their mission. Wares are all about security. The Glitch discovered an app is illegally tracking cars in Wareville. Not many car thefts in the city warrant such an extreme measure. He reaches out to McSkiddy to investigate and identify how the application is tracking them and leaking users' positions. So the learning objectives today, we're going to learn about WebSocket, some of the vulnerabilities, and then we're going to talk specifically about WebSocket message manipulation. So before we start talking about all things, we're going to need to make sure we've got our VMs all running. So we're going to need the attack box today and we're going to need to start the virtual machine. So I'm going to start my machine here and I'll scroll up to the top and then start my attack box. Introduction to WebSocket. WebSockets let your browser and the server keep a constant line of communication open. Unlike the old school method of asking for something, getting a response and then hanging up, WebSockets are like keeping the phone line open so you can chat whenever you need to. Once that connection is set up, the client and the server can talk back and forth without all the extra requests. WebSockets are great for live chat apps, real-time games, or any live data feed where you want constant updates. After a quick handshake to get things started, both sides can send messages whenever. This means less overhead and faster communication when you need data flowing in real time. When you use regular HTTP, your browser sends a request to the server and the server responds, then closes that connection. If you need new data, you have to make another request. Think of it like knocking on someone's door every single time you want something. They'll answer, but it can get tiring if you need updates constantly. Take a chat app as an example. With HTTP, your browser would just keep asking any new messages every few seconds. This method, known as polling, works, but it isn't efficient. Both the browser and the server end up doing a lot of unnecessary work just to stay updated. WebSockets handle things a bit differently. Once the connection is established, it remains open, allowing the server to push updates to you whenever there's something new. It's more like leaving the door open so updates can come in immediately without the constant back and forth. This approach is a lot faster and it uses fewer resources. However, while they do boost performance, they also come with security risks that developers need to monitor. Since WebSocket connections stay open and active, they can be taken advantage of if the proper security measures aren't in place. Here are some common vulnerabilities. 1. Weak authentication and authorization. Unlike regular HTTP, WebSockets don't have built-in ways to handle user authentication or session validation. If you don't set up these controls properly, attackers could slip in and get access to sensitive data or mess with the connection. 2. Message tampering. WebSockets let data flow back and forth constantly, which means attackers could intercept and change messages if encryption isn't used. This could allow them to inject harmful commands, perform access they shouldn't, or mess with the data that was sent. Three, cross-site WebSocket hijacking. This happens when an attacker tricks a user's browser into opening a WebSocket connection to another site. If successful, the attacker might be able to hijack that connection or access data meant for the legitimate server. Four, denial of service. Because WebSocket connections stay open, they can be targeted by DOS attacks. An attacker could flood the server with a ton of messages, potentially slowing it down or crashing it altogether. So what is WebSocket message manipulation? WebSocket message manipulation is when the attacker intercepts and changes the message sent between a web app and its server. Unlike regular HTTP requests that go back and forth one at a time, WebSockets keep the connection open, allowing for two-way communication. This is what makes WebSockets great for real-time apps, but it also opens the door for attacks if proper security isn't in place. In this type of attack, a hacker could intercept and tweak these WebSocket messages as they're being sent. Let's say the app is sending sensitive info like transaction details or user commands. An attacker could change those messages and make the app behave differently. They could bypass security checks, send unauthorized requests, or alter key data like usernames, payment amounts, or access levels. 
For example, imagine a web app using WebSockets to handle money transfers between accounts. If an attacker gets hold of the message before it hits the server, they could change the amount being transferred or even send the money to a different account. Since WebSocket connections happen in real time, these changes would take effect instantly without the user or the server noticing immediately. This kind of manipulation can also lead to more significant problems. Hackers could inject harmful code or try and get high level access. For example, they might change a message to give themselves admin rights or insert malicious commands to take control of the server. What makes this attack so dangerous is that WebSocket connections often don't have the same security protections as traditional HTTP connections like end-to-end -end encryption, which encrypts the request body of an HTTP request using JavaScript with an AES key or an RSA public key stored in the JavaScript file. If developers don't have vigorous checks like message validation or encryption, it's easy for attackers to exploit these gaps. By tampering with the data being sent, attackers can cause all sorts of damage, from unauthorized actions to full system compromises. The actual impact of changing WebSocket messages does depend on how the app uses them and what kind of data is being sent. Here's a breakdown. 1. Doing things without permission. If someone can tamper with WebSocket messages, they could impersonate another user and carry out unauthorized actions such as making purchases, transferring funds, or changing account settings. For example, if a WebSocket manages payment transactions, an attacker could manipulate the transaction amount or reroute the payment to their own account. 2. Gaining extra privileges. Attackers could also manipulate messages to make the system think they have more privileges than they actually do. This could let them access admin controls, change user data, view sensitive info, or just mess with system settings. 3. Messing up the data. One of the significant risks is data corruption. If somebody is changing the messages, they could feed bad data into the system. This could mess with user accounts, transactions, or anything the app handles. They could change things in real time and disrupt everybody's work in circumstances such as a shared document or tool. 4. Crashing the system. An attacker could also spam the server with bad requests, causing it to slow down or crash. If this happens enough, the system could go offline, causing serious downtime for users and businesses. Without good security checks, this kind of message tampering can lead to anything from unauthorized actions to the downing of an entire service. Okay, so let's have a go at setup here. So we're gonna need the attack box and we're gonna need a virtual machine. I have already started mine, but if I press so split view, we'll be able to see my little desktop here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to visit the IP address here. Now this IP address is mine. You might have something completely different on yours. All you need to do is open up your web browser and actually go and view it. So all I'm going to do is type in the IP address here. So mine is 10, 10, 1, 4, 3, 1, 8, 7. Sweet. So we can see the application here and you can see it's the same one as on the little screenshots. And I can press glitches car and then press track and I can see the car moving around. There's also this chat box functionality on the side here. So we can send messages and we can see it comes up in the message chat. So this is a great use of WebSockets because this is our real time communication and we're seeing where the car is going. So how do we start to look at this communication? So step one will be make sure you've got burp set up on your web browser so all you're going to do is go to this icon here the little fox looking thing and you're just going to make sure that it's on burp here and it should say go green and say the word burp on it at the same time you're also just going to start up burp in your attack box so all you need to do is go to the side panel and open up Burp Suite Community Edition. And I'm just gonna wait for this to boot up. And then once it boots up, you just leave the settings as is. So you just do next and then start Burp. The other settings are for like, if you're using the premium edition, we're not, we're just using the free one. So we don't need to save it as a project or anything. Okay, so this is Burp. And you may notice that mine is a little bit larger font size than yours. This is just so you can see it. All my tabs are still the same. So you're gonna go to the proxy tab, which is here and you're gonna see the intercept is switched on. So now when we reload the page, it shouldn't actually load anything because as you can see down here, it's actually waiting until burp is gonna press forward. So to start with, I'm just gonna switch it off 
so that way the page loads. Now I'm just going to go to my proxy settings and make sure that I'm intercepting both my regular HTTP and also WebSocket. So as you can see, I've got these two ticked, so we're done. What do we want to do? Let's put on intercept on and then just wait and see what happens. So here we can see this is a WebSocket, that's where it says type, and the direction is to client, that means it's coming to us. This is what it contains. So the city center's traffic is looking good, come and visit from the sender ID of two, and the sender is McSkiddy. So if I now forward this, we'll see that we can see the message here. Okay, so how do we actually do this? I'm going to just keep intercept off until I'm ready. So let's have a look at what happens when we track the car. So I'm going to turn intercept on, and I'm going to press track. So this is a WebSocket request to the server. So you can see type WebSocket direction to server. And you can see down here, we've got track user ID five. So if we wanted to track a different user ID, all we need to do is change that five to a different user ID. So we can see here that number eight is mere malware. So if I change this to an eight and then I press forward, Instead of getting Glitch's car now, it's going to track Mem Hours. So if I switch the intercept off, we can see what he's doing. And here we go. We've got a flag here. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to submit this flag. So I'm going to do copy, paste it in here, submit it. Cool. So what is the value of flag two? So as we can see down here, following the successful identification of the WebSocket message manipulation vulnerability, Glitch continued testing for other ways to exploit the application. This time he wanted to see if the messages posted to the app could be altered and manipulated. Is it possible to post using a different user ID? So let's give that a go. So I'm going to go back into Burp. I'm just going to refresh the page and I'm going to put intercept on again and I'm going to send a message. I'm going to press send and here we can see again this is the WebSocket it says WebSocket and you see it says to server and then it has the URL all I need to do is just send this here where it says sender change that five to an eight for mere malware forward that and then turn intercept off and we can see that we're able to send a message as mere malware so again we can copy our flag here copy it Scroll down to the flags and submit it. So that's it. Actually using WebSockets is not that different from regular HTTP. And honestly, it's a little bit easier because you've got that real time interaction. If you want to learn more about this, you can check out the other Burp Suite uh, modules that Try Hack Me do from the basics to using repeater to intruder and to more. The basics here covers what is Burp Suite, how you navigate, what all the tabs do, and that's a great place to get started when you're learning Burp Suite. But otherwise, that's kind of it for today. Thank you so much for joining me as we did this little WebSocket room. One of my favorite things about the advent of cyber in general is literally just learning things that I'm not familiar with, things that I think I know, but actually I'm not sure if I actually do, and just exposing me to different ideas. So thank you so much. If you wanna see more of my videos, I talk about all things bug bounty hunting, web security, API hacking on my channel. Please do check out some of my other videos, but otherwise I will see you all in the next video. Bye everyone.